Hi everybody. It's the second of April today. Wishing everybody uh we're coming up pretty quickly on Easter. Hoping everybody's doing well in twenty twenty one and that it's a lot better for you than twenty twenty. Hey today is gonna be a video. Here we go again. This is I you know, Donnie Reagan love him. He's the he's the the gift that keeps on giving. And today we're gonna have another video about the interesting things that message ministers say. I received a video excerpt or video clip. We're going to show it here in just a moment. It's something about what Donnie Reagan said concerning William Branham and how former message believers and people who don't follow the message of William Branham think incorrectly about William Branham and how William Branham was revealing the Word and and how that was new and different and exciting and and how we can't compare you know, we can't look for scripture to vindicate or validate what William Branham had said, just as we can't when we look at Noah and the story of the flood. So we'll go ahead and play that, that uh, video clip for you from uh, Donnie Reagan, uh, and then we'll, we'll go back and address some of those issues. So here we go with Donnie Reagan talking about Noah. Oh, no matter how much they said the old man was off in his mind, that he was scientifically wrong and mentally he was wrong, but to Noah, it was the word of the Lord. So let's be real fundamental then, and let's go up and ask Brother Noah to show us a scripture. We want to see it wrote in the Bible where God told him to build an ark, because we're a word people or so we say. And we're fundamental. That's the way you know people like to do our prophet in this day. They want to treat Brother Branham like he's just another commentator. I don't think they understand what a prophet is. You see, a prophet is a divine interpreter of the written word. And if God has anything else to say, he'll say it to that prophet while he's here. Praise the Lord. You imagine going up to Noah and saying, Noah, I want a verse of Scripture. He was the Scripture. A prophet of God brings the word that is written in his own life. I wish somebody would say amen with me. All right. So we just saw that with Donnie Reagan talking about Noah. And, uh, and here's what he's referring to. I want to make sure that we're clear. Let's go back and take a look at what Donnie Reagan's referring to. I put it in the study notes. I'm also going to put it up here so that you can follow along as we go. This is the story of the flood. starts at Genesis 6 chapter 6, verse 5 through 22. We'll start there. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm going to par paraphrase it for you as we go through it. But essentially, the Lord wasn't pleased with what he'd created on earth. He thought that man was corrupt. Uh, he regretted that he made man on the earth. And, and he basically, he wanted to wipe everybody off the face of the earth. But there was one family, one person that found favor in, in the sight of the Lord, and that was Noah. Uh, and he wanted to save Noah, and he didn't want to have to start over from scratch. So he gave Noah some uh, instructions. Now, he tells Noah that he wants him to build an ark. He gives him exactly the dimensions that he wants the ark made out of. He tells him to build it out of gopher wood. Uh, and, and he tells him how high it's going to be and what the roof is going to look like. And, uh, you know, he's going to put side door, where to put the door. Uh, how to make it with a lower, middle, and upper deck. Uh, he's going to bring flood waters. He tells Noah, I'm going to bring flood waters on the earth, and I'm going to destroy everything. Now, Donnie's contention here, Donnie's contention is that we can't know that the Lord actually ta talked to Noah. I mean, there is no scripture prior to this in Genesis chapter 6 that shows us that God actually spoke to Noah. Well, in fact, he's right. There is no scripture prior to that because he was speaking to Noah. Now, how do we know whether or not Noah is telling us the truth? Noah came out and he said, I'm going to go build the ark. And, and in fact, Noah did all of that. He gathered the food. He, he did everything. He did everything that God commanded him to do. So how do we know Noah is a real true prophet? It, well, we know this because prophets are vindicated by God. Let's take a look at that. If you take a look at the scriptures, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 19 through 20. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel 
from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of God. How did every everybody in the nation of Israel know that Samuel was established as a prophet of God? Because God let none of his words fall to the ground. Okay? Now, how was Noah vindicated by God then? None of his words fell to the ground. We take a look at Genesis. It's a matter of history. We take a look at Genesis chapter 7. And it goes on from verse 1 to verse 24. <clears throat> Noah did everything that God had commanded him to do. He had built the ark. And in the 600 years of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day, on that day, all the sources of the watery depths burst open. Floodgates of the sky were opened up. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights. You may know the story. Joseph Noah took all of his family into the ark. He did exactly what God told him to do as it relates to the animal and the foodstuffs and how to survive. He did all of that. We know that Noah is a prophet of God. We know that he heard from God because we have the history after he said, this is what's going to happen, build the ark. We know that God did not let any of his words fall to the ground. And we know that God essentially vindicated Noah by sending the flood, just as he told Noah that he was going to do that. That's how Noah was vindicated as a prophet of God, Donnie. It didn't have anything to do with Scripture before that. It had everything in the world to do with whether or not God vindicated Noah by making sure that none of his words fell to the ground. And none of his words fell to the ground. We can tell that he was a vindicated prophet. Now, was William Branham vindicated just like Noah was? Well, let's talk about some visions that William Branham made. First, we're gonna, and I'll just take a bunch of these. There are lots, lots, and lots, and lots of these that never came to pass. Matter of fact, we can't find a vision that William Branham spoke that actually did come to pass, but we'll go through a couple here. Brown Bear Vision. Um, <laughs> and Branham's really specific about this one. William Branham tells us, this next year, write it in your book. It's Thus Saith the Lord. I'm going to go get myself a brown book. And he said, Thus Saith the Lord. That's Branham's, that's Branham's self-proclamation of scriptural authority. Thus Saith the Lord. He said that 1,616 times over the course of his ministry, over 1,100 sermons. Thus Saith the Lord. And that's Branham's self-proclamation of God's scriptural authority. In the case of the brown bear vision, didn't come to pass. In the case of the South Africa vision, I'm going to go to South Africa. We're going to have a tent meeting, 300,000 people. Thus saith the Lord. Branham spoke about that event 30 times over the course of his ministry. 30 times. Including using the phrase, thus saith the Lord. And yet, as we look at the South African vision as an example, Branham finally had to come back and say, didn't happen. You know, it didn't happen. I couldn't get the right visa. I messed that up. My fault. I did something out of order. So his words fell to the ground. South Africa vision did not come to pass. And remember what God says in Samuel. Samuel was identified as a prophet of God. Everybody knew that he was a prophet of God because his words did not fall to the ground. Then you got the municipal bridge vision. That's a really interesting story. He's sitting there playing marbles with his younger brother 22 years before the municipal bridge, and bridge was actually built. He sees 16 men fall off the bridge and drown. Interestingly, the municipal bridge was finished in 1929. As a matter of fact, it was Halloween on 1929 when it was actually inaugurated or dedicated and people started to go across the municipal bridge. Subtract 22 years. 1907. Okay. Now there are some dispute as to what Branham's birthday is. He claims two on official documents. They were the marriage licenses to his wives. But he claims one of them is 1909, the other one is 1907. And yet, William Branham says he was playing marbles with his younger brother when this came to pass. Now, he either wasn't even born yet, if he was born in 1909, or he was less than a year old if he had been born in 1907. But he was playing marbles with his younger brother 
in the yard, saw the bridge collapse, saw the people die, came running in to tell his mother and had a conversation with his mother, either not born yet or less than a year old. Okay? Then we talk about the 1933 Ohio River experience. There were you know, a couple people in the water. There were hundreds of people in the water. There were thousands of people in the water. There was a chorus singing this on the water. Nobody heard, saw the light or heard anything that came down. Whoops! Yeah, everybody saw the light and, and everybody was afraid. People ran away from the thing. It hit every newspaper in the country. There were no accounts of it except in one newspaper where William Branham was basically had 14 converts from his uh, campaign and he was um, he was uh, baptizing them in the river, the Ohio River. Absolutely did not happen as, as William Branham said it came to pass. Then we got the cloud. Was he in Tucson? Wasn't he in Tucson? Was he in Houston? Did the cloud actually happen? Was the cloud a supernatural thing, or was it the result of a, a of an aborted Thor rocket uh, out of Vandenberg? Uh, were there five angels? There were five angels. Nope. Oops. I mean, there were seven angels. Uh, nothing happened. Nobody heard anything. Oops. These guys came over and said, "Boy, did you hear that? Did you see that?" I mean. The cloud is an example of something. His words fell to the ground. He is not a vindicated prophet of God. We can go on and on and on and on with prophecies that William Branham spoke that never, ever, ever came to pass, that did not happen, that were false. And remember, First Samuel tells us that the way we vindicate a prophet of God is that none of his words ever fell to the ground. So what does God say about checking to make sure that prophets are of God? Because we get a lot of grief. People tell us, who are you to talk about whether or not William Branham was a prophet of God? Well, we're instructed to do that. William Branham presented himself as an Old Testament prophet. So let's examine him first by Old Testament uh, evaluation. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 through 5, If a prophet or someone who has a dream arises among you and proclaims a sign, a, a sign and wonder to you, and that sign of wonder he has promised you comes about, but he says, Let us follow other gods which you have not known, and let us worship them. Do not listen to that prophet's words or to that dreamer, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love your Lord with your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You must follow the Lord your God and fear him, you must keep his commands, listen to his voice, you must worship him, remain faithful to him. That prophet or dreamer must be put to death because he has urged rebellion against the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the place of slavery to turn you from the way, from the, way the Lord your God has commanded you to walk. You must purge the evil from you. It's a pretty harsh statement. But you see, any, what, what that says is, even if signs and wonders take place, even if he performs signs and wonders, that doesn't vindicate a prophet. What vindicates a prophet is what comes out of his mouth. Did his word come out of his mouth, follow the word of God? And in this particular instance, it talks about a prophet who basically turns you away from God, uh, who basically says, follow other God. One could say, there's a very, very, very strong argument that when one says that the salvation is, that the Spirit at, at the day of Pentecost which arrived at the day of Pentecost, that that Holy Spirit was not valid for this day. William Branham said that. That Holy Spirit's got nothing to do with this day. If you have the Holy Spirit of the day of Pentecost, it's not evidence of the Holy Spirit today because the evidence of the Holy Spirit today is you have to believe in this message. Now that's teaching another God. That minimizes the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. That eliminates the Holy Spirit as vindication that that uh, you know from what uh, from what happened, right? So he's teaching another God. There's a very very strong argument that says William Branham must die. Well, he's already passed away. Then we have Deuteronomy chapter 18 uh, verses 20 and 22. But the prophet who dares to speak a message in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet must die. Now, you may say to yourself, how can we recognize a message the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the Lord's name, thus saith the Lord, is William Branham's self-proclamation of scriptural authority. When a prophet speaks in the Lord's name and the message does not come true or is not fulfilled, 
That is a message the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. Do not be afraid of him. Now we see that that's the Old Testament version. Oh, they say, but you know what? William Branham was in the New Testament. He came after in the dispensations after the second book of Acts. Let's talk about the New Testament and how we evaluate an, a, a prophet of God in the New Testament. Because Paul tells us in Ephesians that there are prophets. That's an office. There are prophets of God. The prophets of God, the preachers, the teachers, the, the servants, all of those people are there for the edification, edification of the church, edification of the, of the body of Christ. Let's see what happens when we take a look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to determine if they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. We see that Paul also says this, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 20 through 21, despise not prophesying, prove all things, and hold fast to that which is good. In other words, Paul tells us in Thessalonians, and John the Evangelist tells us in the book of the Epistle of John, test everything. Make sure that what you heard is of the prophet of God. And and William Branham said, didn't William Branham say that he only taught what Paul taught? William Branham, 1955, uh, this is February 27th in the morning, the position of a believer in Christ. So if this calling was divine, written in the scriptures, a vindicated by his ministry, I believe what Paul said in the scripture is true. Well, if you believe what Paul said in the scripture is true, then you absolutely have to believe in 1 Thessalonians 5, and other places, by the way, that Paul mentions it. Here's another instance. This is called Jezebel Religion. It's in 1961, March 19th. That's the way I want it to be when I cross there, see. I want it to be that way, just like that. Just what Paul said. Don't want to add one thing to it. Take away, take one thing away from it. That's what the Bible said. That's just the way I want to keep it going, you see. And, of course... You keep it like that. Denominations on every side is going to be raised up a barrier against it. Again, Branham says, just as Paul said, just as Paul taught. Okay? Then you've got the way of a true prophet of God. This is 1962, May 13th. This is a morning. That's what Paul told them to do and said, if anybody else taught anything different, let him, let him be accursed, even if an angel come down. Again, Branham, again stating what Paul taught is correct. This. Word of God, Old Testament and New Testament. Test what you hear from somebody who's supposed to be a prophet of God. How do we test what Jonah said? Or what Noah said, excuse me? We know what Noah said because it came true. The floods happened. He said it would happen. Sure enough, it comes true. God let none of his words fall to the ground, Donnie Reagan, unlike William Branham. See, it's not us. We're not... <laughs> I want to be really clear. We're not placing William Branham in any sort of a category or position. William Branham did that. William Branham's the guy that spoke 1,100 sermons. He said he proclaimed himself a prophet of God over 400 times in those 1,100 sermons. He declared something, thus saith the Lord, 1,616 times in those 1,100 sermons. William Branham placed himself in that position. Now, we have an obligation to go back to the Word of God and examine what is told us by somebody who claims to be a prophet of God to make sure that what we hear is really of God. Here's another quote from William Branham. This is out of uh, an exposition of the seven church ages, chapter 3 of the Ephesian church age. They looked those false prophets in the eye and said, you're not saying what Paul said. You are therefore false. So if we discover that William Branham is not teaching what Paul said, we can declare him false, just as William Branham did. Another video coming out really quickly. The video that's coming out is, Did William Branham Teach What Paul Taught? It'll be interesting. Then we've got another one here. Same book, chapter 7, The Sardesian Church Age. William Branham said, If he preached any other gospel than what Paul preached, let him be accursed. Jesus Christ says this regarding signs and wonders, just as the book of Deuteronomy tells us about them. Jesus Christ says this, they do not vindicate someone as a prophet of God. Matthew seven fifteen through 22 
Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but in, inwardly are ravaging wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. It's interesting because we hear a lot from ministers saying, ah, oh, see, these guys are reprobates. They're backsliders. They're non-believers. You'll recognize them by their fruits. It's interesting here that Jesus Christ was talking about false prophets when he said that says here, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, verse 21, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, and do many miracles in your name? Then I will announce to them, I never knew you depart from me, you lawbreakers. And he says in Matthew, verse 24, chapter, or excuse me, chapter 24, verse 24 through 28, false messiahs and prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders to lead astray, even if possible, the elect. Take note, I've told you in advance. Okay? Now, how are we supposed to examine this? Well, obviously, we're supposed to look at the Word of God. Here we've got the example of the Bereans in the book of Acts, Acts 17, chapter 10 and 11. As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas off to Berea. On arrival, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. The people here were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica since they welcomed the message with eagerness and examined the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. We can examine the scriptures. Johnny, we can even tell that what Noah said absolutely happened. In the sixth chapter, he says this is going to happen, and he started to build the ark, and he fulfilled. He did everything the Lord asked. In the seventh chapter, it happened just as the Lord had told him it would happen, and just as Noah proclaimed that it would happen. We can see that his words did not fall to the ground. The Lord did not allow Noah's words to fall to the ground, and there was a flood. Here we have we, we here we have an understanding of exactly how we're supposed to address this. This has to do specifically with. Uh, the prophet Isaiah 28th chapter verse 10 precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little there a little it all look forward look backward it all has to it all has to come together in the word of God that's how we know the difference between Noah being a prophet of God and William Branham being a false prophet what William Branham said his words were allowed to fall to the ground. His prophecies did not come to pass. His visions failed. And again, it's not us putting William Branham in any sort of a position. It's William Branham that put himself in that position 400 times proclaiming himself as a prophet of God. 1616, that's thus saith the Lord out of 1100 sermons. It, you know, it's really important. And I, and I, Donnie, I'm going to invite you again. I, you know, I would be delighted to sit and talk with you face to face about these things. But the more you keep saying things that are ridiculous, and the more you keep saying things that are just silly, when we look at them scripturally, we're going to continue to have these video discussions. I'm offering you the opportunity to do this in, in one, one on one, face to face, and I would be happy to have that discussion with you anytime you're ready. Just give me a call. All the information you need to get in contact with me is on the end credits panel here in this video, and I would be delighted to have that discussion with you, Donnie. Everybody who hears this, God bless you. I just wanted to pass this along to you. Thank you again for sending the clip. Look for the video that's coming up. Did William Branham teach what Paul taught? That's going to be even more revealing than what we've gone over today. Even though William Branham says that's the standard, that's what we have to believe in. We'll see how that works. God bless everybody. I hope everybody has a fabulous Easter. Uh, if there's anything we can do for you, be sure to let us know. Be in contact with us. And uh, we just love everybody. We want people who are in the message to hear the truth. We want them to know the Word of God. And we want them to be able to compare the Word of God to what William Branham says or to what Donnie Reagan says. We want that to be compared to the Word of God too. Everybody have a great afternoon. God bless you. And have a great Easter. Bye-bye.